Hey everybody, welcome back to Tip of the Week. I'm Dylan with On One, and in this weekly video series, I'm going to be showing you little tips and tricks inside of On One Photo Raw that will help you become a better photo editor. In this week's video, I want to show you how to use the Clone Stamp tool. The Clone Stamp tool is a very powerful retouching tool inside of On One Photo Raw. The Clone Stamp tool allows you to easily remove distractions and objects from your photo, but you can also use the Clone Stamp tool in conjunction with local adjustments, filters and effects to really make your photo come to life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can use the Clone Stamp tool to remove you know, smaller, easier objects from your photo, but then I'm going to show you a couple more examples on some complex ways that you can use the Clone Stamp tool. So I have this photo of these birds here. And when I took this photo, I wasn't able to completely capture this bird up top, so it's cropped out. Well, I don't want half a bird on my photo, so I'm going to use the Clone Stamp tool to remove it. So to access the Clone Stamp tool, you can either head over to the Clone Stamp icon here, which is just a little stamp and it has a fix on it, or you could simply hit S on your keyboard. Once you pull up your Clone Stamp tool, you'll notice that you have a little circle, which is basically the same as a brush. If you pulled up your masking brush or your local adjustment brush, you have your size up here. You can change the size of the brush, the feather, the opacity. But to start brushing, you first have to select an anchor point. And what the anchor point is going to be is what area on the photo that you want to clone. So to grab your anchor point, simply hold down your option key on your keyboard. And now wherever you click is going to be where you're going to clone. So if I want to remove this bird, I want to click on this area of sky here. And now if I hover over the bird, you'll notice it has the blue tone of the sky. And if I brush, it brushes that onto the bird. So basically the clone stamp tool, you're cloning an area on a specific part of your photo and then you're simply stamping it onto another part of your photo. So if I wanted to remove this other bird, I could simply click here, and I could just do the same thing I did and brush this bird out. So that was an example on how you can use the Clone Stamp tool to remove easier, smaller objects from your photo. You know, if you have a bird in a sky or you wanna remove um, power lines from a sky or anything like that, it's a lot easier because you have a lot of tonal contrast, whereas Using the Clone Stamp tool with not a lot of tonal contrast between the foreground and the background is a lot more difficult, but it can be done. So now I'm going to show you a more complex example on how you can use the Clone Stamp tool. Okay, so now on to some more difficult, complex objects to remove from our photos. So I shot this photo last weekend at Trillium Lake in Oregon, and I really want to remove this rock. When I shot it, it was super dark out. Um, I think it was like one in the morning. And so I didn't see this rock right here when I shot the photo and the photo was pretty underexposed when I shot it. So I didn't see it in camera. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, you'll see that it was pretty dark. And so when I looked through my camera to see the photos that I had shot, I didn't see this rock right here, which is fine. So all I did right here to um, bring this photo to life is I boosted up the exposure and I boosted the shadows. So now we have a better exposed photo and I wanna remove this rock. So to do that, I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool by hitting S on my keyboard. And I'm actually just real quick going to turn down the shadows a little bit because they seem a little bit too bright. Okay, so now to remove this rock, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure my brush size is about the same size as this rock so that when I go to remove it, it's sort of just a lot less strokes than having a smaller brush size. So also when thinking about using an anchor point or the area that you want to clone, think about how even you want the tone to be. So if I use an anchor point up here from this reflection right here and I brush it onto this rock, it's going to be a lot brighter and you're gonna have a little bit of the clouds there and it's gonna look unnatural. So you really wanna consider when you're using an anchor point what anchor point is going to give you the most natural look. So this area down here seems a lot darker, which I can play with a lot more. So I'm going to hold down my option key and I'm going to select an area down here. And now I'm just going to stamp it on to this area on my rock.
and voila, the rock is gone. Now what I want to do is I just want to sort of clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to add a local adjustment and I'm going to make sure it's set to darken and I'm going to use my local adjustment gradient and I'm going to slap that down and then turn it onto the reflection in the water. And then I'm just going to play with the opacity to make it natural. And then to sort of hide this area even further, I'm going to go into effects and I'm going to add a filter and I'm going to add a vignette and let's add big softy. And as you can see, we've only increased the exposure, increased the shadows, we've removed that rock, we've added a vignette and then one local adjustment and we've really brought this photo to life. Removing that rock really helped to sort of bring the viewer's attention to this area in the middle without having this big clunky thing on the side of our photo. So now on to the biggest thing people use the clone stamp tool for, and that is removing people. People are always in photos when you don't want them there, and so the clone stamp tool makes it really easy to get rid of them. So I shot this photo a few weeks ago with my mom on the coast in Oregon at the Peter Iredale shipwreck, and as you can see, there is a ton of people around her shooting photos, doing the whole touristy thing, so let's get rid of them. So I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool by hitting S on my keyboard, and now I'm just going to do the same thing we've been doing and I'm going to select an anchor point by hitting the option key on my keyboard and then clicking to grab an anchor point. And I'm just going to start removing the people and objects from my photo. When removing people on a beach or a place with lines, it's always important to use these sort of wave lines and tide lines as a guide. So if I select in this little area here to remove this person, I want to use this wave here, this line, as a guide. So I'm going to make sure I'm on that line, and then I'm just going to click, and then I can just go down, and it'll remove him perfectly. So same thing with this guy. I'm going to grab an anchor point, I'm going to make sure I'm on that line, and then I'm just going to brush him out of my photo. Oops, I went a little too far in there, but I can fix that. You don't have to be too specific because you can always clone out mistakes later. So I'll just anchor point again, clone that out. Also, you'll notice that when we were cloning this out, we duplicated these three rock sections here. So let's just grab another anchor point and anchor point at least two of those out. There we go. And now we just have this last guy here. So again, grab an anchor point, use it as a line. Now just brush him out. And there you go. We've easily removed those people using the clone stamp tool and using these waves and tide lines as a guide for us. So a few things to think about when using the clone stamp tool are one, your tonality. You really wanna consider what's behind the object you're replacing and sort of fit your anchor point to that tonality. Also, your brush size. You wanna use a brush size that's about the size of the object you're removing or similar because you can do it in fewer brush strokes and you can make it look a lot more natural that way. Also, use the lines in your photo as your guide especially when you're on a beach. It's easy to use the waves and the tide lines to really clone and stamp those people out of your photo correctly and naturally. Thank you so much for watching Tip of the Week. I'm Dylan with On1. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and stay tuned for more.